Pete, hey, welcome to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on WGFA. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Peter, uh, let's go back in time here, set the table. Uh, back in 1985, the Braves were uh, heavily favored to go to postseason, but they fell on hard times, as you know, while the uh, Mets were putting together a championship club, guys like a young Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry, and the uh, Atlanta Braves, New York Mets at Old Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta on a typically hot 4th of July. Showers threatening, uh, but a rare sellout expected because of one of the largest fireworks shows in the South. And let me ask you first, how did you wind up going to this game? Did you get these tickets uh, well in advance or just on the day of the game? And we got them in advance. If I recall right, uh, I think our youth group uh, went to the game as a, you know as a group. And uh, my father, uh, I guess, volunte- as, as the evening wore on, volunteered to stay and, and with everybody. And so that's how I, I wound up uh, going and staying. Goodness. So your, your father and your youth group endured this. All of them? That none of them left? Oh, no, no. See, we had, we had a few chaperones, and I'm sure most of them wound up leaving. I think there were just a couple of, couple of diehards uh, other than me. Where did you guys sit exactly in the stadium? Along the third baseline um, in the uh, upper deck. Yeah, typical youth group seats. Upper deck red seats. Okay. First, you had a 90-minute rain delay to start, and uh, then another 40-minute delay in the third inning with the score tied at one. By now, the playing field had to be a swamp, and this was well before the days of advanced drainage systems that today's parks have. Now, at that time, were you thinking of at all of giving up and, and just going home? Yeah, I was, but by the same token, I was still uh, I was still intrigued that uh, we had actually hit Dwight Gooden a little bit, so I was kind of curious to see uh, what was going to continue happening. And you kind of wanted to wait for the fireworks, didn't you? Admit it. Oh, absolutely. Hey, we're talking with Pete Lazar from Atlanta, who attended the infamous 4 a.m. July 4th, 1985 Atlanta Braves game. And, uh, Pete, let's continue with the game itself. Uh, you recall there were several lead changes. And uh, in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Mets led 7-4 to four when the Braves jumped on the Mets' usually dominant closer, Jesse Orozco, for four runs, and three of them coming on a two-out basis-clearing double by one of my heroes, and I'm sure yours too, uh, Dale Murphy, former two-time National League MVP. And I I bet you thought the Braves had it won at that point and just bring on the fireworks, right? Certainly hoping for that, and that was, as funny as it was, it turned out that was his only hit of the night, and he got eight at bats. I was, uh, I was like, yeah, and then because they were going to bring in Bruce Suter at that point, and it was, uh, you know, it was all over. Well, Braves up 8-7 in the ninth, and uh, as you said, the game could have ended right there, but uh, future Hall of Fame closer Bruce Suter, whose uh, career, as you know, really went downhill once he came to the Atlanta Braves, uh, gave up the tying run, and it was on to extra innings, and uh, by that point, it had to have been around midnight, and uh, again, any thoughts of leaving after, say, the 10th or 11th inning so you could catch a Marta bus back, or, or did you, you drove there, correct? Yeah, yeah, we drove over there and and there was no way I was leaving at that point the, the rain had gone as long as we weren't going to get doused again I wanted to stay and see it but I mean I, you I mean you you you've known me forever and that you know that's how I am I want to see the thing through you, you stick around for uh, these, these are the way I figured it it was uh that this would have been my second uh, one of a kind uh, baseball event that I'd been to so uh certainly wanted to build up uh, my baseball resume at that point <laughs> Well, what was the first uh, biggest game you've ever been to? Uh, first one, uh, 1980 World Series in Philadelphia. Uh, I was there, uh, games one, two, and five. Oh, man, that had to have been a thrill. Wow. The f- that was fantastic. Well, as you know, Pete, uh, the score of the Braves-Mets game stayed tied till the 13th when uh, 8-8 when the Mets' Howard Johnson hit a two-run homer, and the game could have ended right there, too. But uh, in the bottom of the 13th, uh, the Braves' Terry Harper on an 0-2, two-out pitch, Game-tying homer off the left field foul screen, tying the game at 10. It's now 1.30 or 2 in the morning. What was possessing you to stay there again? Just, you had to see how it ended out? It, it's like uh, it's like the TNT Network. It was drama. <laughs> Pure drama. Yeah, drama, and I was enjoying every minute of it. And well, on and on it went to the 17th inning. It's kind of past 3 a.m. now, and the, the players are tired, sweating, getting cranky. Uh, in fact, you may recall umpire Terry Tata threw out Mets manager Davey Johnson and Daryl Strawberry for arguing balls and strikes. I, I do recall that. Um, it, was, uh, it was actually very funny, and I think at that point they just wanted a way out. Well, this is the big inning right here. In the 18th inning, Mets get a run on a sack fly to go up 11-10. Braves down to their last out. They've used up all their position players. They send pitcher Rick Camp to bat against Mets reliever Tom Gorman. Camp is a lifetime 062 hitter. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Take it from here. What did you see next? 
Well, let's say the, the end result was uh, Danny Heap throwing his arms in the air as he looked uh, as the ball traveled over his head in left field, and Lenny Dykstra threw his glove in the air. <laughs> in other words, folks, Rick Amp, an 062 hitter, hits a home run, tying the game, the crowd going nuts, and by now there's only, what, six, 7,000 people there, but they're all going wild. They were. They were. And uh, we uh, at that point we had moved down a little bit, so uh, we, we, got a, we had a better view. On to the 19th inning. Mets get five runs in that frame, and surely it has to be over now. But the Braves scrape out two. They have two men on, two out, and wouldn't you know it, Rick Camp is up again to potentially tie the game with another homer. But this time he struck out. Uh, yeah, it shocked <laughs> me, too, because I could have sworn I saw another uh, three-run homer uh, coming off of that bat. <laughs> if I recall, the bat and the ball are now at Turner Fields Hall of Fame enshrined yeah. there. <laughs> well, game finally over, 3.55 a.m. Uh, the numbers, Mets, 16 runs, 28 hits, 2 errors. The Braves, 13 runs, 18 hits, 3 errors. The winning pitcher for the record, Tom Gorman of the Mets, losing pitcher Rick Camp of the Braves. And uh, five minutes later, fireworks go off, scaring the dickens out of the people in the neighborhoods. And uh, now, I, I gotta ask you, you finally drove home. Did you get any sleep at all that night? No, and I didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just went right home and just had breakfast right there, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it was just one of those uh, great moments you had to sit and talk about for a little bit. Well, you can say you were one of like six or seven thousand people to endure that long night at Atlanta Stadium back in 1985. Yeah. And uh, hey, I appreciate you being on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on WGFA this morning and talking about the July 4th, 1985, 4 a.m. Atlanta Braves game. And uh, hey, if you're ever up in Chicago, stop by WGFA and we'll be glad to have you on to talk sports or whatever else. And I uh, wish you a very happy 4th of July and uh, hey, hope to see you again soon, okay? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate the call.